My name's Angelo, and welcome to We Want Picks. We break down full UFC fight cards every single week, giving you our picks, predictions, our bets, and our fantasy plays. So make sure you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you want 50 free dollars, go to wewantpicks.com slash bets. We have five different betting partners who all offer their own promotions, their own matches, and their own giveaways. And then on top of that, after you sign up and after you make a deposit, we send you $50 however you want it. Cash app, PayPal, Venmo, wewantpicks.com slash bets. Next up at UFC 275, we have Rogerio Bontorin taking on Manel Kopp. Rogerio Bontorin is 17-4 and four overall, 2-3 and three in his last five, coming off a close loss just four months ago. Manel Kopp is 17-6 and six overall, 3-2 and two in his last five, and he's riding a two-fight knockout streak. Rogerio Bontorin is a well-rounded grappler who has heavy punches, and he throws with intent, but it's mostly there to set up his grappling. And his grappling is very good. He has solid pressure on top. And he's very controlled. He'll plot. He'll take his time. He'll work from one position to another. He does all of this while keeping pressure and throwing strikes. He can absolutely submit anyone on the ground, but he does take his time and can fall behind on the scorecards. He's coming off a split decision loss to Brandon Roy Val, where he had eight takedowns, almost eight minutes of control time, but only landed half the strikes Roy Val did. So Roy Val was on his back for eight minutes got taken down eight times and still doubled Rogerio Bontorin's strikes. Manel Kopp is a fast, explosive striker who has no issues chasing knockouts. He's a southpaw with good pressure, and he bounces in and out of range really well. He's a decent wrestler when he needs to be, and he closes distance really well when he wants to. And that's the problem, when he wants to, because he's fun to watch, but sometimes he's having too much fun and he makes fight IQ mistakes and doesn't do what he's supposed to do because he's too busy doing what he wants to do and he's too busy trying to have some fun out there. And this should be a fun fight. It's another close one and there's very clear paths of victory for each fighter. If Bontorin can keep the grappling pace like he did against Roy Val, he can have some real success here. But if he's chasing and not setting things up well, diving at legs from really far out, he can be KO'd the exact same way Zalgas was. I do like Manel here. I think his 80% takedown defense is going to hold up. The other thing to consider here, though, is that if you look at the Holly Holm fight and more recently the Jeff Molina decision, judges don't seem to be favoring control time or wrestlers who get takedowns and do nothing with them. So I don't know what the judging situation will be. Sometimes overseas, they're forced to use local judges. Sometimes the UFC with Mark Ratner, they bring in judges. They'll, they'll bring in judges that they've used elsewhere. But recently, if we've seen anything, judges don't care if you get takedowns unless you're doing damage. So that will only help Manel Kopp here as well. So Manel Kopp is my pick, but Rogerio Bontorin, clear path to victory if he wants it. Yeah, let me, uh, I didn't, usually you say, like, you go to me. You usually say, like, Jacob. I'm just trying boy. to be smooth. It's just silk. Well, that's no. something you'll never be. But uh, Manel Kopp, uh, let me be honest with you guys. Um, and full transparency, I hate Manel Cop. Not as a person, as a fighter. I don't, and I don't actually. As as I was sitting here, I figured it out, Angelo. I couldn't figure out why I hate Manel Cop. I literally just figured don't it out. Say as it. I'm thinking don't about say it. Don't say, Jacob. Don't. No, I, no. I, it, it's because I think he is exactly what I would be as a fighter because <laughs> yeah, he's sure. not that good, but he thinks he is like the absolute best fighter in the world. And I understand that all fighters are confident, right? But this guy thinks he is like the best fighter in the entire world and good for him for that confidence but he's he lost two fights in a row basically for you know kind of being like inactive in those fights i mean being a little too cool for school type of situations and then he's losing against ode and finds a knockout so that would have been three in a row then he's losing against zalgus and then finds a knockout and i said i picked against him for the ode fight I picked against him for the Zalgus fight, and I said going in that Zalgus fight, if Manel Kopp ends up be beating Zalgus, I will never pick against Manel Kopp again. So I like, I don't like the guy for whatever reason. As a fighter, I mean, personally, I have no, nothing against the guy, but for some reason, as a fighter, I do not like the guy. I am going to pick him in the fight. He should win this fight, so this is probably the fight that he's going to lose. If you're Bontorin, you just need to wrestle and make this fight boring because if you make this fight boring, Manel Kopp will let you Make the fight boring, and you can grind out a decision win. But if you start getting into firefights with Manel Cop, 
He'll lose. He's almost like the Andre Fiala, right? He'll he'll lose exchanges until he wins the one exchange. He'll lose it, lose it, lose it. He's getting hit, getting hit, and then boom, you're knocked out on the canvas. So my make it, my 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 pick is Manel Cop in this in this, but this is probably gonna be the one he loses because I picked against him twice. He won both times. Now I'm on the Manel Cop side, and yeah, then he's probably gonna lose. But Manel Cop's my pick. Well, and let's not forget the whole PED thing. So Manel Cop pissed hot a couple months ago. Him and um, me both. He's suspended right now. He the only reason he's allowed to fight on this card is because it's not in America. It's outside of any jurisdictions, any athletic commissions. It is in Singapore. That's the only reason he's allowed to fight. Now he appealed it. He was like, it must be tainted supplements. Like the the level that I tested positive for is so ridiculously small. There was some other circumstances. Pictogram. The, What's with the John Joe's a p- pictogram? Pictogram. Pico. pictogram? Yeah, they, they gave him a six-month suspension. It has not been six months. This just happened recently. So that could be a factor here. It could be in his head. could be messing with him. I don't know. But he is fighting, uh, you know. That's why I didn't, I didn't open with that because that doesn't, have a, that doesn't play a factor into my pick. But that is, that is happening to him right now. He is technically suspended he cannot fight in america hell if you already he is if you already suspended you might as well just load it up man you might as well just well, start loading that thing up baby <laughs> well and the ufc picked the side right they're not punishing him they're putting him on this card the ufc is like yeah we believe him that doesn't that doesn't matter that doesn't count so i pick cop you're uh you're not right no i pick cop okay yeah oh that's right you said you can't pick any of his fights correct we both on the cop side, $9,200 or 7000 Listen, Manel Cop, if he just continues this knockout streak, then yeah, he's worth that money. I mean, he's, he's putting people out. Even the O'Day fight was losing, bang, knockout. So he's live for a knockout. He doesn't Flying get frustrated if he falls what behind. A joke. He so doesn't get frustrated when he falls behind. I think O'Day was my lock of the week or so. I can't remember if, if, if he was. Dude, this but... is such a tricky card, too, because I've picked so many underdogs. I mean... I could see all the underdogs I pick went losing and then all the all the favorites I pick. Like every one of these fights, there is a very a a very reasonable argument to be made for both sides. And and there's very few there's very few fighters on this card that if they win, I'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Right. Very and few. that's why I keep saying listen to the analysis, not necessarily the picks, because the picks are wild on, on, on both sides uh, this week. So listen to the analysis. I guarantee you we have better analysis than anyone. Well, <laughs> and if tricky, you think tricky. somebody has better analysis, you come see me. And I, I got these gloves behind me. Woo. Okay. Um, what the hell was I just saying? Okay. You want 50 free bucks? We want picks.com slash bets. You sign up, you make a deposit, we send you 50 bucks. As a thank you, if you want to dip your toes in the daily fantasy water, check out Monkey Knife Fight. All you need to do is say more or less on these strike lines, and you can triple your money. We on picks.com slash MKF. 39 to 71. 71 is a lot. 39 is not a lot. That's a weird line. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Chris, damn it. You did it. I'm not going to touch. Damn don't you, touch Chris. This, don't touch this strike line. Throw Manel Cop in your Knockout Kings. We talked about it. Monkey Knife Fight's got a game called Knockout Kings. You can pick any three fighters on the entire card, any three, even two in a fight with each other, any three. And if one of them, just one wins by KO or TKO, you get yourself some money. They'll instantly match your deposit, so you, they'll give you free money. Take the free. Yalo, Dana, Cop. Boom. You, you can have Jiri if you're on that side. There's a bunch of people that are live for knockouts, at least at what people think, so. Check it out. We on picks.com slash MKF.